Our good old solar system is actually a pretty bizarre place. Well, with all its out-of-this-world phenomena that we humans haven't managed to explain yet, there are rumors that a gigantic, undiscovered planet is hiding behind Neptune. Volcanoes on Pluto spew ice. And a colossal canyon on Mars can accommodate the whole U.S. territory and most of Cleveland. Well, let's figure out if it's true by talking about the most mystifying solar system facts. The solar system is 4.6 billion years old. So old, it's a senior solar system. Scientists came to this conclusion after they studied the oldest material they managed to get a hold of. And by that, I mean meteorites, of course. You won't be able to wear a hat on Venus, ever. And just try to stand on your feet. The planet is insanely windy. Its upper winds blow 50 times faster than the planet rotates. What's more, these fierce winds never stop and can get even stronger with time. Want to get away? You'll have to travel 11 billion miles away from Earth before ever leaving the solar system. Take your Google Maps with you. You probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of natural processes such as volcanic activity and cows. Anyway, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering, and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. Can there be cows on Mars? As you may remember, Pluto used to be a planet, but was stripped of this title in 2006. Later, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Gee, make up your mind. But the most unexpected fact about this celestial body is that its diameter is smaller than that of the U.S. See for yourself. The greatest distance across the country, from Maine to Northern California, is about 2,800 miles. As for Pluto, it's only 1,473 miles across. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, you can't win either way, rotates on its side And astronomers have no idea why the planet has chosen such an unusual position. The culprits could be ancient mega-powerful collisions, but so far it's just a theory. By the way, this is the only planet laying on its side. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? Well, 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is in the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Earth might not be the only tectonically active planet in the solar system. Astronomers have spotted some landforms looking like cliffs on Mercury. If it's so, the tectonic activity could explain the rapid shrinking of the planet. In most sci-fi movies about space, the main character gets into an asteroid belt and must dodge countless rocks that threaten to damage their spacecraft. Well, sorry to disappoint, but that's nothing like the real thing. The only asteroid belt astronomers know about is located between Mars and Jupiter. There are thousands of asteroids in this region, but they're so widely spaced that the chance of collision is next to nothing. Ah, you just ruined it. Sorry. Dust storms on Mars can really go crazy. They hurtle through the red planet's southern hemisphere, especially during the summer. These storms can grow and encompass large areas of the planet, as happened in January 2022. Then, a dust storm covered almost twice the area of the United States. Could it be something like this that caused one of the robots we sent to Mars to go missing? The atmosphere and climate are harsh on Mars. It's mostly a desert with strong winds and average temperatures of minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. It drops down to minus 220 at the poles during the winter. A lander needs to be specifically equipped and very sturdy to withstand such conditions. But researchers thought the Beagle 2 could handle the difficult trip to the Red Planet. June 3, 2003. A team of researchers got one of their pioneering robots they were about to send to space ready. It was a small and compact lander called the Beagle 2. Its mission was to touch down on Mars and search for what the world has been actively looking for for decades now – life on the Red Planet. Now, the touchdown was due on December 25th, but the signal never came. The team tried to contact the spaceship, but at one point, they had to accept they wouldn't be able to reach it. 
Some thought the landing was too difficult and complex after all, so the lander crashed. But they couldn't find any technical errors. Others had a theory that the lander may have become entangled in its own parachute and fell down to the surface of Mars. Either way, the Beagle 2 was considered missing. Until 2015, when NASA took pictures of what could be the remains of the lost lander. They weren't just smashed debris, the components actually looked to be intact. The lander's remains were lying with its solar panels partially deployed around 3 miles away from the site where it was supposed to land. Apparently, the Beagle 2 managed to land successfully, but its radio antenna got blocked. That's why researchers couldn't control it from Earth or communicate with it. But no one knows exactly why it happened. Have you heard of a face on Mars? In the 1970s, one of NASA's spaceships took the iconic images of the Martian surface that showed a face-like formation, as you can see in the upper part of the picture. If you have a rich imagination, you can easily see a nose, two eyes, a mouth, and an unusual hairdo. Some even thought it was a monument built on the red planet by another civilization. How about some other unusual things people have found on Mars? Like Happy Face Crater. You can easily see why it has this nickname. Or rocks in different shapes. A pancake, brachiosaurus, or a fish. Mars also has a waffle-shaped island on its surface. It's a 1.2-mile wide feature you can see in the area of lava flows. It might be the result of lava pushing this formation from below. It seems astronomers have also got some images of blue dunes. It's a sea of stunning dark dunes that strong winds sculpted into long lines. They surround the planet's northern polar cap and cover a region as large as Texas. The red planet is usually known for its brown sandy dunes. So these ones certainly came as a surprise. In reality, though, they're not really blue. If you could visit Mars right now just to take a look, you'd see that these dunes appear brown and orange like the rest. And the picture is a false color image. Scientists often use false colors to highlight differences in something. For example, here, it's the difference in depth. Also, the biggest valley on Mars is so large it could eat our Grand Canyon for breakfast. It's a fascinating system of canyons 2,500 miles long called Valles Marineris. And it's over 10 times as long as the Grand Canyon. Now, if you could stretch this Martian canyon, it would go from coast to coast of the entire United States. Since Mars doesn't have any active plate tectonics, no one knows for sure how this canyon formed. One theory says a chain of volcanoes located on the other side of Mars, the one that includes Olympus Mons, bent the crust from the opposite side of the planet. This powerful force caused cracks in the Martian crust as well as activated enormous amounts of water lying under the surface. This water then emerged and carved the rock away. The force activated glaciers too, and they possibly created new pathways in this gigantic canyon system. Volcanoes on the Martian surface could have erupted about 50,000 years ago, although the most powerful eruptions happened 2 to 3 billion years ago. But the planet doesn't have active volcanoes today. Most of the heat stored in its interior during the planet's formation has been lost. So now, Mars's outer crust is way too thick for the molten rock to reach the surface. But a long time ago, eruptions formed giant volcanoes. And these volcanoes most likely had an important role in melting ice deposits, which released floods of water onto the Martian surface. Now Mars has a thin atmosphere with a volume of gas, mostly carbon dioxide, less than 1% of Earth's. But 4 billion years ago, it was way warmer and wetter than now. Its atmosphere must have been thicker back then, too. That's why it could create a powerful greenhouse effect and trap sunlight. Mars also has a powerful magnetic field. Similar to Earth's, it formed because of the currents of molten metals in the planet's core. But unlike our home planet, Mars lost its magnetic field after its core had cooled down. And without it, the planet didn't have any protection from the solar wind, which is a stream of charged particles flowing from the sun. The solar wind pulled away most of Mars' atmosphere in just a couple hundred million years, give or take. This is what makes those powerful Martian dust storms even more intense. Mars has a fascinating history. Judging by the planet's glaciers, Mars has probably gone through multiple ice agents, just like Earth. 
a team of researchers got images of about 60,000 Martian rocks. Rocks were different in size and distributed randomly, which means they probably formed during different ice ages. Glaciers hide their own stories, too. Who knows what kinds of gases, rocks, or even microbes could be trapped inside. Now, if you could get into a time machine and stop it 4 billion years ago, on Mars of course, the chances are you'd see spectacular scenes of flooding. Maybe there would even be some form of life on the planet's surface. A strong meteorite impact that formed the red planet's gale crater could be something that triggered that mega flood. After that collision, the temperatures on the planet got insanely hot. This caused the melting of all that ice that was stored on the Martian surface at that time. The flooding was so massive, it changed the geological structure of the planet's surface. It carved out big ripples, as well as waves in the sedimentary rock. Now, speaking of water, vapor has been noticed escaping the atmosphere of Mars. Also, researchers have found some evidence of water flowing on the planet's surface. There are dark streaks in the soil. They seem to get bigger in the summer and shrink over the winter. There are numerous dried-out valleys and river channels on the planet. It's possible that liquid water once flowed there. Now, most of it could be locked up in ice caps or even hidden under the surface. More and more things hint that Mars used to be habitable. Mars is the only planet we know about where only robots live. Five rovers make up the Martian population. Those are Perseverance, Opportunity, Spirit, Sojourner, and Curiosity. These robots are there to take pictures and samples of soil and air, and maybe even find life on the red planet. And someday, we may reunite with them on Mars. Who knows? Oh, and by the way, if you really could get into a time machine and stop it 4 billion years ago on Mars, then I'd like to buy you lunch and talk about it. My treat! Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists can't explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding a ginormous planet from our sight. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Volcanoes on Earth are as different from those on Pluto as fire and ice. And I mean it. While we have volcanoes spilling lava on our planet, the volcanoes on Pluto spit ice. When frozen water expands, and this enormous pressure builds up until one day, bang, the ice erupts. In the process, a new cryovolcano gets formed. One of Saturn's moons, Lapidus, has a unique color. It's two-toned. One of its hemispheres is light, and the other is eerily dark. Scientists haven't figured out this mystery yet. There's another weird thing about Pluto, or rather, about its atmosphere. First, it rises way higher above the surface of the dwarf planet than, for example, the Earth's atmosphere. What's more, the atmosphere on Pluto has more than 20 layers, and all of them are super cold and very condensed. We live inside the Sun. No, I don't mean that we're inhabitants of the red-hot ball of light approximately 93 million miles away. The thing is that the Sun's atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And our planet is right within its reach. In fact, it's the gusts of solar wind that create the breathtaking phenomenon known as the northern and southern lights. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other on the rest of the solar system's planets. But wait! It's not the type of ocean you're thinking about. The one on Jupiter isn't made of water. This mesmerizing thing consists of metallic hydrogen, and its depth is a staggering 25,000 miles, which is almost the same as the circumference of the Earth. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. People came to know about Saturn's beautiful rings in the 1600s. But only recently, it became apparent that Saturn isn't the only ringed planet. All the gas giant planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter, have rings of their own, 
but they're thin and almost impossible to see. As for Mars, Venus, and Earth, they're made of rocky materials and have no rings whatsoever. Our solar system isn't the only one in the Milky Way galaxy. Far from it. The galaxy we live in houses about 100 billion solar systems. And if that's just our galaxy alone, can you imagine how many there are in the whole universe? At any given moment here on Earth, you can stumble across a rock that's arrived from Mars. After scientists analyzed the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places on our planet, they came to the shocking conclusion that they have a Martian origin. Since Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, many people simply assume that it's also the hottest. And that's where they get it wrong, because, in fact, Venus, which is about 30 million miles further from the Sun than Mercury, is way hotter. The thing is that Venus has an incredibly thick atmosphere, which is 100 times denser than the one we have on Earth. On top of that, this atmosphere consists almost entirely of carbon dioxide, also known as a greenhouse gas. These factors make the temperatures on the planet rise to a staggering 875 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt lead. As for Mercury, its maximum temperatures reach only 800 degrees. It's raining cats and dogs, literally. Things falling down from the sky can be pretty unexpected. So here are some examples. Residents of Texarkana, Texas once had light rain and fish shower. No need to go fishing out in the sea. The fish literally falls down on your head. In fact, animal rains are not uncommon. Water spouts or updrafts occurring in different corners of the earth sometimes carry small creatures up with them. Those could be crabs, frogs, or indeed, fish. A water spout is generally a whirlwind that picks up water and grows in size until it connects the surface of the water and the clouds. Lightweight critters living close to the water surface often get caught in the vortex and carried up and away. Thunderstorm clouds are constant companions of water spouts too. When the storm reaches a landmass, it starts slowing down, having nowhere to take the new energy from. It slowly subsides, the atmospheric pressure drops, and the thunderclouds release the water in them, along with the unfortunate small animals and fish. Sometimes it's just a few frogs frozen from the cold up above, but at other times it could be hundreds or thousands of creatures raining down upon the land. A much more unusual rain once happened in Oakville, Washington, and it's still waiting for someone to explain it. The rain clouds looked perfectly normal, but the rain they released was anything but. Translucent jelly-like blobs fell on the town, covering a total area of about 20 square miles. Each of them wasn't larger than a grain of rice. Researchers who studied these raindrops claimed that the gooey blobs contained human white blood cells. Some believe they might have been evaporated jellyfish resulting in rain, or waste from a commercial airplane. Now this kind of rain is what I'd like to see someday, a money shower. One such event occurred in a small town in Germany. A woman was driving when she suddenly saw banknotes swirling down from the sky, so she hit the brakes. She went out of her car and later said she managed to collect quite a large amount of money. After which, as any responsible citizen should, she turned it over to the police. Strangely, when the officers came back to the scene with the woman, they couldn't find any more cash, although she claimed she hadn't been able to collect everything. There's still no explanation for the event, but certainly, no water spout could have caused that. A pretty unpleasant kind of rain happened back in 1876 in Olympia Springs, Kentucky. It was a very local kind, too. Mrs. Crouch said that she had been making soap outside her home when pieces of raw meat suddenly started falling down from the sky around her. Some of those chunks were pretty massive, reaching over three inches in diameter. Local newspapers reported that two people who decided to remain unknown tasted the meat and concluded it was mutton or venison. Months later, scientists decided to find out the truth behind the strange event. It became a matter of heated debate until one of the researchers came up with the most reasonable conclusion. The meat rain must have been caused by vultures flying over the town at the time. These birds sometimes regurgitate food right in the middle of their flight as a defense mechanism, or to make their bodies lighter to fly faster. 
And that must have been what happened right over Mrs. Crouch's house, unfortunately. Something totally inedible, but no less sinister, rained down on several villages in India in the middle of May of 2022. Huge black and silver metal balls started dropping from the sky, the first one weighing over 15 pounds. Astounded residents watched in shock as it hammered the ground, scattering pieces of itself across the nearby fields. Similar balls later fell in the other two neighboring villages. Luckily, no one was harmed during the strange metal rain. But the issue remained. We're on Earth, and it usually rains water here. The local authorities weren't sure what it was about, but astronomers soon voiced a theory that it could be debris from a space rocket. One that fits the description had launched in September of 2021, aiming to put a communication satellite into orbit. Upon its re-entry into the atmosphere, it might have been damaged, causing several chunks of it to detach and fall down on the ground in India. Our sun is an average-sized star, and still, it could fit 1,300,000 Earths. The star is also 333,000 times as heavy as our planet. NASA has translated radio waves created by planets' atmospheres into audible sounds. That's how astronomers found out that Neptune sounds like ocean waves. Jupiter, like being underwater. And Saturn's voice resembles background music to a horror movie. Here on Earth, it's bebop jazz. Now I made that up. The sun's surface is scorching hot, but a bolt of lightning is five times hotter. Earth gets struck by 100 lightning bolts every second, which results in 8 million lightning strikes a day and around 3 billion a year. Ooh, shocking. If you manage to go to the moon one day and see fresh footprints, that doesn't mean there's someone else there with you. Footprints or similar marks can last for a million years over there. Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. There are no winds, not even a breeze, that can slowly erase those footprints. Astronomers have found the largest hole we've ever seen in the universe. It's the giant void that spreads a billion light years across. They found it accidentally. One of the research team members was a little bored and wanted to check how things are going in the direction of the cold spot. That's an anomaly in the Cosmic Microwave Background Map, or CMB for short. It's a faint glow of light that falls on our planet from different directions and fills the universe. It's been streaming through space for almost 14 billion years as the afterglow that occurred after the Big Bang. So, you fall right into the heart of the black hole and prepare for a sad end. Well, you don't have to. Falling into a black hole won't necessarily destroy you or your spaceship. You have to choose a bigger black hole to survive. If you fall into a small black hole, its event horizon is too narrow, and the gravity increases every inch down. So, if you extend your arm forward, the gravity on your fingers is much stronger than on your elbow. This will make your hand lengthen, and you'll feel some… discomfort. Rather significant, to be honest. Things change if you fall into a supermassive black hole, like the ones in the center of galaxies. They can be millions of times heavier than the Sun. Their event horizon is wide, and the gravity doesn't change as quickly. So, the force you'll feel at your heels and at the top of your head will be about the same. And you can go all the way to the heart of the black hole. This myth is busted. If you watch a very touching movie in space and start crying, your tears won't run down. They will gather around the eyeballs. Your eyes will get too dry so you'll feel like they're burning. Any exposed liquid on your body will vaporize, including the surfaces of your tongue. Speaking of burning, that's one thing fire can't do in space. Fire can spread when there's a flow of oxygen. And since there's not any in space, well… Once they explode, stars aren't supposed to come back to life. But some of the stars somehow has survived the great supernova explosion. Such zombie stars are pretty rare. Scientists found a really big one called LP40-365. It's a partially burnt white dwarf. A white dwarf is a star that burned up all of the hydrogen. And that hydrogen was previously its nuclear fuel. 
In this case, the final explosion was maybe weaker than it usually is, not powerful enough to destroy the entire star. It's like a star wanted to explode but didn't make it, which is why part of the matter still survived. If you ever go into space, don't take off your spacesuit unless you're on a spaceship. Air in your lungs would expand, as well as the oxygen in the rest of your body. You'd be like a balloon, twice your regular size. Good news? The skin is elastic enough to hold you together, which means you wouldn't explode. <laughs> Small comfort. When something goes into a black hole, it changes shape and gets stretched out just like spaghetti. This happens because gravitational force is trying to stretch an object in one direction, but at the same time, squeeze it into another, like a pasta paradox. Speaking of, a black hole that's as big as a single atom has the mass of a really big mountain. There's one at the center of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A. It has a mass like for a billion suns, but luckily, it's far away from us. If you made a big boom on an asteroid, you'd never be able to hear its loud sound. Yes, we often hear the sound of spaceships and battles in space in the movies, but that's just a myth. Sound is a wave that spreads because of the vibrations of molecules. A person claps a few feet away from you, the sound wave begins to push the first air molecule next to the clap, then the second, third, and so on, until the wave reaches your ear. So, to spread sound, we need molecules like air or water. In our atmosphere, sound waves spread out just fine. But space is a vacuum, so it's nothing here. You can clap your hands loudly there, but there just won't be any molecules that can vibrate and carry that sound. So, to carry on a conversation, you'd either need a radio or really good lip-reading skills. Meteoroids orbit the sun, while the majority of human-made debris orbits our planet. For example, we launched almost 9,000 spacecraft around the world from satellites to rocket ships. Even the tiniest pieces can damage a spacecraft at such high speeds. Galaxies, planets, comets, asteroids, stars, space bodies are things we can actually see in space. But they make up less than 5% of the total universe. Dark matter, one of the biggest mysteries in space, is the name we use for all the mass in the universe that's still invisible to us. And there's a lot of it. It may even make 25% of the universe. Dark energy makes the other 70% of the universe. Hmm, that adds up to 100, right? Now, let's look at the moon. It always looks at us with one side. This means the moon has a dark side and the sun's rays never get there. Well, that's a myth. The whole point is that the moon is gravitationally locked to the Earth. There are days and nights there, too. It's just that this rotation is perfectly aligned with the rotation of the Earth. So whenever you look at the moon, you only see one side. Although there are days when the sun shines there, too, so it's not the dark side, it's the far side. And we even have pictures of this place. And there's one of the biggest craters in our entire solar system. The South Pole Aiken Basin is as wide as two states of Texas. Yeehaw! One myth that turned out to be untrue is that people have never actually been on the moon. This is the original spacesuit of the first astronauts who were there. Look at the sole of the shoe. Some people claim there's no way they could have left footprints like this there. Actually, they could. On the moon, the astronauts wore extra boots over their suits, and their soles matched the footprints on the moon perfectly. Now, the astronauts didn't need them when they left the moon and tossed them when the moonwalk was over. They left a lot of stuff there, too. They even tossed the armrests of the seats in the lunar module to reduce the weight. Now, counting all the Apollo lunar missions, the total weight of rubbish on the moon is approximately 187 tons including several lunar rovers, spacecraft debris, six lunar modules, and all the experiments left behind. That's like three Boeing 737s. Another myth about the sun is that it's yellow. Let's send you into space for this one. You look out the window and it's white. The sun only appears yellow to us through the filter of our atmosphere. The composition of the air and its thickness just distorts the light of the star. But stars do come in different colors. Cooler stars have bright orange and red colors. 
these are usually very old stars, older than our sun. But young and very hot stars are bright blue. The sun is about in the middle of the spectrum. Oh, one more myth about asteroids. We need to fly a little farther than Mars' orbit. Whoa, we're in an asteroid belt, and we constantly have to dodge giant rocks and blocks of ice. We got in some dense asteroid clouds. Hmm, not true. The fact is that space is huge, and the distances are incredible. All the rocks and debris in the asteroid belt are only 4% of the weight of the moon, so there really aren't that many of them there. To understand the dimension of the emptiness in space, look at the collision of two galaxies. There are billions of stars in each of them. If we mix them up, it's unlikely there will be any collisions even here. The sun's heat is beneath our feet. Scientists have figured out that Earth's core is actually as hot as the surface of the sun, around 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the reasons it's so incredibly hot down there is because Earth is still shedding heat from when it was created billions of years ago. Also, when an object as big as Mars slammed into the young Earth, it not only created the moon, according to one theory, but melted the surface of the planet. A lot of that extra heat is probably still stored inside the core. But there's no need to worry. The planet's core is harder for us to access than it is to probe the surface of Pluto. In fact, chances are we may never develop technology that could physically reach the core. There's no air on the moon. But then, how can it be rusting? Scientists have discovered the presence of hermatite on the moon, and it's a kind of rust. A special NASA research instrument examined the light reflected off the moon's surface. It turned out that the composition of the satellite's poles was very different from the rest of it. The moon's surface is dotted with iron-rich rocks. But without oxygen and liquid water, rust can't appear. Solar winds add to the mystery. They bombard the moon with hydrogen. And hydrogen makes it much more difficult for hematite to form. Even though the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, it still has some trace amounts of oxygen. Its source is our planet's upper atmosphere. Earth also protects the moon from almost 100% of solar winds, although not all the time. And even though our natural satellite is bone dry, there might be water ice in the shadowed craters on its far side. A day on Uranus lasts 17 hours, 14 minutes, and 24 seconds. But get this, the planet has a tilt of around 98 degrees, And that makes a season on the gas giant last 21 Earth years. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, Mars' gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart, and it will likely result in the formation of a ring around the planet. The Earth is the densest in the solar system. At the Earth's center, there's a core that takes up 15% of the planet's volume. It consists of two parts, the outer and the inner core. The inner core is a solid ball made of iron and nickel. Its radius is 760 miles, which makes 20% of the entire Earth's radius and 80% of the Moon's radius. The 1,500-mile-thick outer core is liquid. It also consists of iron and nickel, but it's not under enough pressure to be solid. Mars houses the biggest volcano in the solar system. While everything seems to be calm on Mars nowadays, in the past, some sort of force caused enormous volcanoes to form and erupt. One of these volcanoes is Olympus Mons. It's 16 miles tall, which is the height of three Mount Everests, and 374 miles across, making it about the size of Arizona. The volcano grew to such a gargantuan size because of the weak gravity on Mars and the lack of tectonic plate movement. Gravity is not the same everywhere. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and substances that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. 
you weigh 0.5% less standing at the equator than you do at the poles. In most cases, that's a difference of less than one pound. How high up you are also has an effect. So if you were at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Just don't look down. Earth's toughest living thing is so small, you can't see it. Water bears, also known as moss piglets, are cute little creatures with eight legs and squashed up heads that are less than a hundredth of an inch in length. Despite their microscopic stature, they can basically survive anywhere. They prefer bits of wet moss or the bottom of a lake, but they won't complain if you put them somewhere really uncomfortable. They can endure extreme cold and incredible heat and survive both huge pressure and high radiation. Some of the little bears once even managed to survive unprotected in outer space for 10 days without a problem. Huh, that is tough. They handle all these things by rolling up into a ball and hibernating, which reduces their need for oxygen and food. The moon's gravity is about 17% of that on Earth. If you weighed 200 pounds on our home planet, on the moon, your weight would decrease to a mere 34 pounds. You would also be able to carry stuff six times heavier than what you can carry on Earth. It would also be easier to walk on the moon's surface, but it would be more dangerous too. Your feet, inside a heavy spacesuit, would sink into the lunar soil up to six inches deep. But let's imagine you decided to skip the tedious process of walking by leaping through the air. Then you'd likely lose control of your jumps in no time. Plus, the moon's surface is littered with deep craters. It would be a tough feat to avoid all of them. You can see solar eclipses because even though the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it's also 400 times closer to Earth. So it's perfectly capable of obscuring the star. But in 50 million years, I won't be around then. The moon won't be able to block the sun completely because of the satellite's changing orbit. A full NASA spacesuit costs an unbelievable $12 million. Yeah, I can believe that. 70% of this hefty sum is for the control module and backpack. At the very center of Uranus, there's a rocky core. Small, just half the Earth's mass. Compared to other planets, Uranus's core is rather cool. 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. An ice mantle surrounds the solid core, and that's the largest portion of the planet, about 80%. It's also not the ice you might be thinking about. It's a hot, dense fluid made up of water, ammonia, ice, and methane, sometimes referred to as a water-ammonia ocean. Uranus's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, but it has its blue-green color because of methane gas that absorbs the red light. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other in the solar system. But unlike Earth's oceans, it's made not of water, but of metallic hydrogen. The ocean's depth is a mind-blowing 25,000 miles. That's almost the same as the distance around Earth. Venus is a champ when it comes to volcanoes. The planet has about 1,600 major ones, but none of them is known to erupt. There's a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from us. It hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's 57 octaves lower than the middle C on your piano. That's one quadrillion times deeper than what we can hear. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, Scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hadn't finished cooling down yet. There are planets that aren't bound to any star orbit and aimlessly wander through outer space. Among the most spectacular-looking space objects are pulsars. Pulsars are a type of neutron star. They shoot out some of their material almost at the speed of light. Regular pulsars spin at a reasonable speed, between one-tenth to 60 times per second. But millisecond pulsars can spin at an impressive 700 times a second, which is way too fast for the human eye to even process. As they spin, they emit a beam of radiation from their axis that looks like the light from a lighthouse. Astronomers can notice pulsars when they face Earth, 
since it looks like a light being shined on our planet. When the light shines elsewhere, the pulsar can't be seen. Our sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is the mass of the sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was three feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Even though Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, it still has snow. But not what you'd expect. It snows metals and rains acid. Not a great vacation spot. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.